Hello. Welcome to Elon Markets. My name is Pratik and today I am going to give you a brief introduction to the Dow theory. Now any attempt to trace the origins of technical analysis would inevitably lead to Dow theory. This theory which is more than a hundred years old remains the foundation of much of what we know today as technical analysis. The Dow theory was formulated from a series of Wall Street Journal editorials authored by Charles H. Dow from 1900 till the time of his death in 1902. These editorials reflected Dow's beliefs on how the stock market behaved and how the market could be used to measure the health of the business environment. Much of what we know today as technical analysis has its roots in Dow's work. For this reason, all traders using technical analysis should get to know the six basic tenets of the Dow theory. Let's explore them. Tenant 1. Market discounts everything. The first basic premise of Dow theory suggests that all information, whether it's the past, present or even future news events, is discounted into the markets and reflected in the prices of stocks and indices. The information includes everything from the emotion of investors to inflation, interest rate data, along with pending earning announcements to be made by companies after the close. Based on this tenant, the only information which is excluded is what is unknowable, such as a massive earthquake. But even then, the risks of such an event are priced into the market. Moving on to tenant 2, the market moves in trends. There are three types of trends in the market. The first is the main movement or the primary movement, or also known as the major trend, which may last for less than a year to several years. It can be bullish or bearish. The second is the secondary movement or the medium swing or the intermediate reaction as many people say. It can last from 10 days to 3 months and generally retraces from 33% to 66% of the primary price change since the previous medium swing or the start of the main price movement. Lastly, we have the minor movement which is also known as the short swing. The short swing can vary from an hour to a month or even more. The three movements may be simultaneous. For instance, a daily minor movement in a bearish secondary reaction in a bullish primary movement. Tenant 3. Trends have three phases. The Dow theory asserts that the major market trends are composed of three phases. An accumulation phase a public participation phase and a distribution phase. The accumulation phase is a period when the investors who know about the stock movement are actively buying or selling the stock against the general opinion of the market. During this phase, the stock price doesn't change much because investors are in the majority demanding stock that the market at large is supplying. Next, we have the public participation phase. Eventually, the market catches on to these astute investors and rapid price change occurs. This occurs when the trend followers and other technically oriented investors participate. Finally, we have the distribution phase. The public participation phase continues until rampant buying and speculation occurs. At this moment, the astute investors begin to distribute their holdings to the market. This phase is what's known as the distribution phase. Then we have turn and 4, which says that the stock market averages must confirm each other. Under the Dow theory, a major reversal from a bull to a bear market or vice versa cannot be signaled unless both indexes are in agreement. In the Indian context, we can take an example of Nifty, which is the index of the National Stock Exchange 
and the Sensex, which is the index of the Bombay Stock Exchange. Now, looking at these charts here, we can see that if you remember the major fall in the Indian markets on the 24th of August 2015, the overall fall in the Indian market was close to 6%. As we can see in the chart here, the fall in the daily chart of Nifty has been confirmed by the chart of Sensex. As you can see in both these charts, there is the chart of Nifty and the chart of Sensex. The fall has been confirmed by both the market averages. Hence, we can say that the stock market averages always confirm each other. Ten and five, trends are confirmed by volume. Now, according to Dow theory, the main signals for buying and selling are based on the price movements of the indexes. Volume is also used as a secondary indicator to help confirm what the price movement is suggesting. From this trend, it follows that volume should increase when the price moves in the direction of the trend and decrease when the price moves in the opposite direction of the trend. For example, in an uptrend, volume should increase when the price rises and fall when the price falls. The reason for this is that the uptrend should gain strength when the volume increases because traders are more willing to buy an asset in the belief that the upward movement will continue. Low volume, on the other hand, during corresponding periods signal that most traders are not willing to close their positions because they believe that the momentum of the primary trend will continue. Finally, as we can see in this chart here, during the rapid movement of the uptrend in Nifty, there is a rapid increase in the volume that accompanied it. Now, if we compare this volume to the average volume of the previous and the phase that continued after that, the volume has been pretty high compared to the other times. Finally, we have 10 and 6, which says that trends exist until definitive signals prove that they have ended. Charles Dow believed that trends existed despite market noise. Markets might temporarily move in the direction opposite to the trend, but they will soon resume the move prior. The trend should be given the benefit of the doubt during these reversals. Determining whether a reversal is the start of a new trend or a temporary movement in the current period is not easy. Hence, Dow theorists often disagree in this determination. Technical analysis tools attempt to clarify this and this can be interpreted differently by different investors. So here we are at the end of this short video in which I have described about the Dow theory. I hope you enjoyed a lot and learned from this video. Thank you for watching.